what I'll be doing first is to create a grid to come up with sort of an organization of a circle. And to come up with a grid, I go to vector and underneath vector, I'll grab a grid component. And if I, if we zoom into the input of this grid component, we have, but obviously we can select rectangular, square, triangle, radial, hexagonal, and so on and so forth, but I'll just stick with the one that creates squares. So it's asking me a plane, just in case I create a plane on XY plane. Okay. And then I can preview this one. The, the size is the size of the grid cell, size of each edge of grid in squares. So if you put 150 as a start, I think we can start seeing some things. Yeah. You see, we see some things as like, as with 150. So if I increase this, I see 1,000, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So on each end, we, on X and Y end, we have five different or five rows and columns of these thousand by thousand cells. So if I put 20 here, control C and control V, I put this in, put this in. What I'm seeing now is basically 20 by 20 grid, Obviously, you can say 15 by 20 grid or 15 by 15 grid. It's completely up to us, okay? So this is the first thing, right? The second thing that I wanted to do here is basically create sort of the circles inside of this grid organization and how I would be, how I can do that. If I go to, there are two ways to do so, but let me give you a brief information about the component called square grids. So as you see, it has two outputs. One is cells, the other is points. So curve, if I connect the curve component to the cells, I'll be seeing the curves. If I put a point to the points output, I'll see the points. Points are every single corner of these uh, squares or grid system that are coming or that are formulated, formed by these Square. So I don't need to see the points, right? I can just go ahead and proceed with the curve. And if you see this, this would be another video, but I'll be talking about obviously. But when we see this amount of, when we see this amount of uh, dashed lines coming out of from an input or output, we immediately need to see that there are many lists that are coming from this input. So you see there are like 15 lists or 15 polyline curves on each list. As you remember, these are columns by and by row. So if I put a area to see the midpoints or the centroids of these curves, and if I connect the point list, if you remember our, from our previous videos, not to size obviously, to the point, and always change this so, you see what I'm looking at. So this, these are the points that I'm seeing. Like these are the circles on row zero. These are the, sorry, not circles. These are the squares on row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, and so on and so forth, right? And they're all under this with the same names, right? So that means we are having information here, columns and rows, and that's why we have different amount of lists. We don't have one single list. We have list of 000, 001, which is this, and 002, which is that, and so on and so forth. Hey everyone, if you want to access the exercise files, please click the link in the description to access our school community. Okay, so we can just keep it here for the, set, for the sake of this exercise, but maybe, maybe, preview this off. And in the meantime, I need to group this. So let me group this with a scribble and then put this in and then say square formation. Okay. And the next thing that I want to do is maybe group this as well. Pulling out a scribble and then add to group and say 
circle locations. But maybe we can use paint it into some of the colors like this. All right, so I just now know my circle location. So what would happen if I create a circle and see what is happening? So I create a plane as my circle, even though I can't see them now, there are really tiny circles inside of each and every cell we have. So just to give an idea, or just to follow with what we have, we can just use the size 1000 again. So if I connect the number, and then if I connect this to here and connect it to here, my radius is going to be obviously a thousand and if we do that we will be increasing the size so we need what we need to do is we need to divide this into two connect it over here and connect it over here and this time I, i'll divide it by two and now what i'm seeing is i'll create i just created this uh, squares that are touching one another so maybe i can preview this off so I have a grid of circles now. Let me put it this way. And maybe we can group this as, for now obviously, we can group this as circle locations, not circle locations, obviously. I'll be grouping them as circle grid. And what I'll do next is defining my attractor point. So again, what I basically want to do is if I put a point here, I want this definition or I want the script to change the size of the circle based on this motion, right? So what I'll be doing, I'll be creating a point here. It's an empty one, set one point, and I just define this, okay? And I can maybe preview this off. Okay, sorry, I can preview this off, and my point is here. Let's group this and pull out a scribble, say, crack the point. If I track. So, what I want to do is sort of create a relationship between this point and the circle. So, how can I create that relationship? The very basic information that we can use is the distance between this point and the circle midpoints, which are these ones, right? So if I go to vector and then grab a go under point and then grab component called distance, what this does, it's going to create or it's going to calculate the distance between my point A, in this case, the circle grid, and the point B, my attractive point. And if I pull out the panel here, what I'm seeing is I am seeing all these values, changed values over time here. So there are a couple of ways to handle this data, but let's put this in as my radius first. And what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing circles, I'm seeing this weird pattern, which might be, which could be cool, but let's see if we see any changes with the point. So if I change the point, things are changing, but they, the size of the circles are too big. That's why we are not able to see the, like the, the results quite well. So one thing to test our idea first, if I grab a division again, if I divide these results by, I don't know, like 100 and then put this in. So you see now, I see the change and it's way more controlled, but a bit small now. So maybe 25 might be helpful. Okay, just double click to this, 25. And you see, if I pull this point here, then again, what we are trying, what we'll be seeing is they are all overlapping on one, one, on one another. I mean, which might be something you want to do, which might be something you want to avoid. But there are a couple of ways to control this data. The one 
thing that, or the, the most common one is to take these values and take these values and remap these values, remap all these values based on the information that we are, like based on the information that we are uh, use, we are going to use. So you see there are like 11 meters, nine meters and so on and so forth. So if I go to math, for now, let me just put this here again, just to just to give it an idea. Okay, oops, not that one. Sorry. We can just leave it here. If I go to the math, and underneath domain, we will see remap numbers. So what this does is basically we are going to use these values as our remapping values. So you see there are different values like in total 225 that are listed in under 15 different lists. And what this asking me next is the source. So source domain meaning the domain of these values. So what is the starting point and what is the end point? Because based on this source, we'll be assigning a target, right? So if I grab a bounce component, which exactly creates the uh, creates this information related to the starting and the end point of each range, you see. But the problem here is these all these are created by the values of these guys. So this remap value is created by only for the column row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four, and five, and so on and so forth. So again, at the beginning, I already mentioned about this, but we are, if we don't want to, like if we don't want to use this information column by column or row by row, in this case, we don't want to do that. We need to take them all under the same list. So if I right click to this and if I say flatten, now what I'm seeing is instead of one zero 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 what i see is zero one two three four five fourteen fifteen so on and so forth so what i have now is 225 different values because what i have is now they're not the information of the distance is not being stored under 15 different lists they are under the same list therefore i can use this in my purpose so this is my source Okay, and the next thing, obviously, maybe we can take this apart and we can just put this guy in here as well. So the next thing, what I can do here is basically change these values, right? Change these values in between. Uh, there are two ways to do this. We can change the radius between, or we could zero to 500, or we can just scale this. So let's work with the radius. So we already know our radius, the Height, the, the, the ceiling of our radius is going to be 500, right? If it's more than 500, they are going to intersect. So to avoid that, we have to set our target domain in this one between something like, let's say, construct domain, we can say between zero and 500, which is this value here. And if I connect this over here, just to maybe like we can take these out from this group and take them, remove from the group, and we can just all connect it over here. And obviously we did it in the wrong fashion. We connected into the end, not the start. So what we are having here is this, so we can take this guy out. And what I'm doing here is basically remapping the radiuses, right? So I can group this and make the previous so circle grid, copy paste, and then say add to group. Oops. Remapping radius or remapping sizes. Let's see. And if I connect this to my circles, 
what I'm seeing now is basically, let me paint this into some other color. What I'm seeing now is I put this here and even though I put this point somewhere here, what I'm seeing is the closest ones are going to be always zero or close to very zero and the larger ones are going to be 500. But even if you zoom in enough, you see that they don't intersect with one another. And the good thing about this, even if you increase the sizes, so if, and if you go like this, since you created the system, definition will follow how it works. You see, wherever you put the point or wherever you have the point, this system will follow what you have. So this is basically what we are doing with the, or what the, the basics of the logic of this uh, tractors, attractors, 